Hey guys, Chaps here, and let's hit on a Horde topic. Or, well, I guess it's PvE topic. Recently, the Coalition announced that they have some plans for PvE that would allow people to play as any COG character. In the context of this post, it read to me as, We're working to split classes from characters. It shouldn't be a surprise to know that I've requested this since pre-launch, so needless to say, I was pretty excited. Back closer to launch, I did a video covering this topic that covered the pros and cons of the system, as well as my views on what they should do. I'll have that link below, and I highly recommend checking that out as a precursor to today's discussion. Today though, I wanted to go into more detail about what I believe they're probably going to end up doing, as well as some of my suggestions and areas of concern. As a quick recap from that other video, the major bonus that we get from this change is that players are now able to play whatever character they want, and still play in whatever style they want. Want to play as Baird, but also want to be a sniper? You got it, dude. The other bonus is that it allows the Coalition to release characters at a quicker rate. Well, for multiplayer, that is. There's no need to hold them back from PvP if they're ready to go. Holding them back doesn't help them come to PvE any quicker, so let's just get them out there. As of this latest blog post, it seems like the Coalition is embracing this idea, so good on them. I'll also say that once they're unlinked completely, when they come in for PvP, they'll be ready to go for PvE. They may not bring a new class with them, but they're ready to go and usable in PvE. Before I hop onto the cons of this change, let's talk about how I think they're going to be handling things. Quite simply, I feel that they're going to take all of the existing classes and remove any character-specific qualities of them. Perks, weapons, fortifications, ultimates, and all of that fun stuff basically stays the same. Most cards will also stay the same, other than a few that have direct mentions of characters by name. The largest change though will be the stripping of the actual character or skins tied to the class. Using Kate as an example, we'll no longer select Kate. We'll now select Camo Scout, or whatever they decide to name it. The actual character selection is completely different. So we could select Camo Scout, and then go over and pick JD if we want. Ideally, I feel that we should select role or class, like engineer, scout, sniper, and stuff like that, and then select our subclass, which further refines things like your ultimate and cards, but I doubt the coalition's gonna go this deep on it. So now, with a basic understanding of how I think the new system will function, let's cycle back and hit on some of the cons of this change. Arguably one of the largest benefits to come from locking classes to certain characters is how easily identifiable they became. In the game, you can see a Marcus, Baird, Cat, or whoever, and you know exactly what their roles, weapons, and abilities are. It also holds true for the mental cataloging of characters. It's much easier to remember Cat does XYZ and Del does ABC rather than using generic class names. Putting a recognizable name and face to the class goes a long way. In Gears 4, it wasn't really that hard with only 5 classes, but the list has grown significantly since then, and some of the changes between classes is quite small. The other aspect of putting a name and a face to a class is the personality that comes with it. JD has his daddy's boy card, Cole has his abilities based on his thrashball background, Del and Jack share a connection based on their experiences in campaign. By delinking classes from characters, this essentially needs to be reworked. It's kind of unfortunate that we're going to be losing this, but I feel it will be worth it. So what are my concerns with this change? Well, let's begin with the number of added classes. Previously, TC held themselves to a standard of every time we have a new character, we'll add a new class. This change basically frees them of that obligation. Overall, I feel this is a good thing, but we as fans need to hold TC accountable. I'm not saying that we need to eventually have a new class for each character that they've added, but I do feel that we should hold them accountable for bringing at least a class or two in each operation. Next, we should hit on achievements. We currently have achievements tied to leveling up certain characters. With the way I see things going, we're probably going to need to level up classes rather than characters. I'm not sure what it will take for TC to change the achievements to reflect this, but hopefully it's not that much of an issue. People should be prepared for that though. To be clear, they're not going to be wiping our classes and characters or whatever, it's just whatever your character level is, is now going to become your class level for whatever that class becomes named. What about the topic of easily identifiable teammates? Well, there's no denying that this will certainly be harder to differentiate people now. One solution to this is to limit the number of people who can play as a given character. I'm assuming they're still going to limit us to one of each class, but they now could also add on a one of each character restriction. Let's say I chose to be Sniper, and then I choose my character as Anthony Carmine. Sniper is now off limits, as TC doesn't want duplicate classes. Anthony Carmine would now also become off limits. This would help the team and identification because now, in this lobby, if someone sees Anthony, they know that he's the sniper. 
it's not as clear cut as what we have currently with the class locked characters, where you would see, oh, that's a Foz, and it doesn't matter what lobby you're in, you always know he's a sniper. But it's certainly more clear than letting people run around being whoever they want. I mean, if you had an engineer who was Foz and a sniper who was Foz, it could get confusing. So maybe limiting to one of each character in a lobby wouldn't be a bad idea. So my question to you all is, would you be okay with TC locking a lobby to one of each character, or do you want to play around with five Kates? Also another question is, what if in matchmaking, classes were still locked to characters, but in private or server browser, you could customize it? People in server browser could potentially communicate more and have a better understanding before it starts. In matchmaking, it could be a mess. Perhaps this is a solution to help provide some assistance in matchmaking. What do you think of that? Now onto the last item of interest, and that's the method of availability. We currently get some new characters and classes with each operation. You get a totem for the character, or you buy the character, and you get them. But you also get the class associated with them. How do you think TC will handle this going forward? Will we just receive the classes for free automatically? Will we need to earn them through the tour or totems? Perhaps they're purchasable? I'm curious, what do you think TC will do? Or better yet, what do you think TC should do? And again, I want to be really clear with this, we've been given no indication of what exactly they want to do, these are just my views. I think they're going to simply split out the character and split out the class, let you be any class with any character. This means that any COG character that comes to the game, be it, hey, we have the DB who doesn't have classes yet, we have the DB, we have Anthony Carmine, Benjamin Carmine, Gary now, um, we're gonna have Dizzy and Dom probably in the future, maybe they won't come in with classes associated to them but they can play as any of the existing classes. And then down the line, the Coalition can also add more classes to the game. This change comes with both pros and cons, but overall, I think it's for the best. It's still not completely clear how the Coalition plans to approach this, or even when we should expect to see it, but I'll be sure to let you all know if there's any new developments on this front. For now, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And don't forget to tweet us, and tweet the Coalition with your thoughts on the change. I'll catch you all next time, and thanks for watching.